She's an everyday kind of love Every morning, morning, a minute This love is an everyday kind of love Evening up our voices to you, Lord. We sing, oh, 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 you're beautiful, you're worth it all. Oh, oh, oh. we lift up, we lift up our hearts. Oh, 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 we lift up our spirits to you. okay if we go a little bit outside the box can we go can we go a little bit outside the box what am I saying in this house you want to do, God. 
come and do all you want to do, Lord. Come and do everything you want to do, God. Come and do all you want to do, Lord. This love can break. There is no chain this love can break. There is no chain this love can break. There is no chain this love can break. This love, this love is an everyday kind of love. This love. This love is an everyday kind of love. This love, this love is an everyday kind of love. This love, this love is an everyday kind. It's an everyday kind. This love is an everyday kind of love. The morning, a minute. This love is an everyday kind of love. Every evening, a minute, every day, kind. It's an everyday kind of love. This love is an everyday kind of love. Every morning, a minute. This love is an everyday kind of love. Every evening, a minute, every day, kind. It's an everyday kind of love. This love is an everyday kind. It's an everyday kind of love. This love is an everyday kind of love. Everyday kind of love. This love is an everyday kind of love. This love, yeah. Have it all, Lord. You can have it all. You are worthy, God. You can have it all. Cause you are loving. You are love. You are love. You can have it all. You could have it all. You could have my morning times. You could have my evening times. You could have my morning times. You could have my evening times. You could have my night time. You could have me anytime. God. Step into the fire with you. I want to be on the altar with you. I want to be in the fire with you. I want to be in the clouds with you. I want to be caught up with you because I'm taken by your love, God. I'm taken by your love. I'm taken by your love, God. I'm taken by your love. Taken by your love, God. Oh, oh, oh. Oh, oh, oh. Oh, oh, oh. Oh, oh, oh. Oh, 
You're the kind of girl that wants a Day and night Day and night Oh, you made the day so beautiful And you made the night spectacular draw our hearts, you draw our hearts, you draw our hearts, again and again you say, even when it's just a whisper, my son, my daughter, I made you for myself. My son, my daughter I made you for myself I made you to behold me Will you let me behold you? I want to know you, the Lord says tonight. I want to know you more. I want to know you, he says to you. Will you let me know you? Will you let me in? Will you push open that door just a little wider for the Lord? Lord, come and know us. In, increase the oil in our land. Oh, Lord, increase the oil in our land. We don't want to be foolish virgins. Oh, oh, no, 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 no. We don't want to be foolish virgins. Spirit, we're trusting in you to come and do what you do. Come and pour out fresh oil. Do the new thing that you want to do. Do the new thing that you want to do.
You give me joy down deep in my soul, down deep in my soul, down deep in my soul. I heard this house likes to dance. Can we dance? <laughs> So that requires us all standing up now and saying, come on, Lord, release the, release the, the, the anointing for the dancing. <laughs> secure knowing your heart Lord I've never been so free caught up in your love for me joy down deep in my soul deep in my soul deep in my soul you give me joy down deep in my soul joy forevermore I've never been so free, caught up in your love for me. I've never been more secure, knowing your heart, Lord. I've never been so free, caught in your love for me. I've never been more secure, knowing your. You haven't seen me till you see me fill with joy. You haven't seen me till you see me fill with joy. You haven't seen me till you see me fill with joy. Joy forevermore. Joy forevermore. 
you haven't known me you know me filled with joy you haven't known me till you know me filled with joy you haven't known me till you know me filled with joy joy forevermore you haven't seen me till you've seen me filled with joy you haven't seen me till you've seen me filled with joy you haven't seen me till you've seen me filled with joy joy forevermore you haven't known me till you know me filled with joy you haven't known me you know me feel with joy and know me so you know me feel with joy joy forevermore Let the joy in this house, let the joy in this shout, let the 
joy break in this place. Let the joy break in this place. Let the joy break in this house. Let the joy break out, 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 break out. Life's too short to not 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 break out. We want all you want to do. We want it all, God. We want you. We want all you want to do. We want it all, God. We want you. We want all you want to do. We want it all, God. We want you. We want all you want to do. We want it all you want to do. We want it all you want to do, God. We want all you want to do. We want all you want to do, God. All we want you. We want all you want to do, God. Oh, we want you. We want all you want to do. We want you, God. We want you. 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 Lifting my head, hope 
is rising as I see you smiling. Belongs to the Lord. Salvation belongs to the Lord. Salvation belongs to the Lord. Salvation belongs to the Lord. Jesus, you love us so amazing. The joy I can't explain it. I'm caught up in the fellowship. Fellowship, Jesus, your love is so amazing, and this joy I can't explain it. I'm caught up in the fellowship, I'm caught up in the f- the heavier the lover just fade away, the heavier the lover just fade away, the heavier the lover just fade away. Just fade away. The heavier the lover, 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 just fade away. Just fade away. The heavier the lover, just fade away. The heavier the lover, just fade away. Fade away, fade away. The heavy of the lover just 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 fade away. Just fade away. Every other lover just fade away. Every other lover just fade away. Mm-hmm. 
So many rushing waterfalls Oh, there's fire in your eyes A heart so filled with love And your face shines like the sun And I can look at you all day long, all night long, my whole life long, Lord. I can look at you, looking at me, looking at you, looking at me. I want to be in this place night and day, day and night, Lord. You're my every time, God. I want to be looking at you, looking at me, burning with like a fire, Lord. And everything changes When your touch is just what I've been waiting for My whole life long How did you know? So good to be in this place with you again. I don't ever want to leave. Coming to know you as my friend. Mm -hmm. Your everlasting. 
resting on set. could have my
Worthy of every song you could ever sing Worthy of all the praise we could ever bring Worthy of every breath we could ever breathe We live for you Jesus, the name above every other name. Jesus, the only one who could ever save. Worthy of every breath we could ever breathe, we live for you. up our voices. Let's give him all the praise. Let's give him all the glory. There is none like you, God. There is none. There is none. You are worthy. Oh, Jesus, 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 Jesus. Hallelujah.
I will stand and worship you, God. For you alone are worthy of all worship. You alone are worthy of all praise. There is none like you, God. You are the Alpha, the Omega, the beginning, the end, the pioneer, the author of our faith, Lord Jesus. And we declare you, Lord. We declare you, Lord, over our lives. We declare you, Lord, over this church. We declare you, Lord, over this city, Lord. We declare you, Lord, over this nation. You are God. 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 Come on church, lift up your voice, lift up your voice, let's declare praise, let's declare praise in this place, there is no God like Jehovah, there is no God like Yahweh, there is no God, there is no God, there is no God.
family come together. United we stand and we declare, Lord, we are hungry for you and only you. We as a nation come together and say we are hungry for you. Show us your power, show us your glory. Above all, show us you, Lord. We want to see you. Come on, give a wave offering to the Lord in this place. Say hello, Daddy. Say hi, Pops. Hello, Abba. Turn to somebody and say, better is one day in his courts than a thousand elsewhere. him again that is excellent it really is and so um so just come come on write it in it's, it's really amazing is there anybody um new to the london awakening is this your first time here i see one hand up praise god oh two hands three hello if you can stand up we will just honor you in this place come on come on oh hello part of the same women in ministry network um, god bless you for coming come on let's give her a big god bless you what um where uh, helen uh yes oh god bless you for coming i don't know you uh, i don't know your name sir isaac joy somebody say joy say joy joy hallelujah uh, praise god we're so happy you're here and sir what's your your name Jack. Jack or Jack? Jack. Praise God. Welcome. Is there anyone who's coming from outside London? 
If you've come in from outside London, we want to honor you here. Is there somebody else new? Um, if you if you stand, oh hi, what's your name? Hannah, welcome. God bless you. So is it only Londoners here? Jared, we're all Londoners. Uh, praise God. You know we've got we've got so many people watching on live stream. Which camera do we turn to? We want to just turn to them and say big God bless you. Come on, stretch out your hands. And say God bless you. Praise God. Hallelujah. Um, just to kind of introduce ourselves, my name is Preeti and my beautiful husband. I'm just saying. <laughs> you know, um, if my Lord is beautiful, my other Lord is also beautiful. <laughs> so, <laughs> Praise God. Ra Rakesh and I, we're the pastors of Capstone Church. It is an amazing church. I, it is. It really is. I love this. I love this house. Um, and um, we have... Um, we, we are a local church. We have Sunday services uh, on Sunday. My Lord, it is amazing. Sunday service on Sunday. We've got two locations in Ilford, 10 a.m. and in Southall, 10 a.m. So we meet and it's our, our services are so much fun. I, I love it myself. I, I'm here usually. So praise God. So uh, we've got, um, we've got um, two locations. You can find all the details on our website or speak to one of our team um, we've got um, maximum coming up which is our annual conference now um, the first really the outpouring that we first tasted was in maximum two years ago when our kids were hit by the power of God for over two three hours they were on the floor it was the kids starting from about six to seven years old you know, and they, they started having simultaneous visions and encounters. And um, so we've got maximum this year. And but we because we're continuing with the London Awakening till the end of October, we are actually keeping maximum free. You know, so uh, we are investing into the city and we're bringing in the ministers. We've got Charlie Shap with us and our spiritual parents. Come on, yeah, give it up for them. Charlie Shamp, I don't know if you're following him, he's been accurately prophesying things that are happening around the world. He's speaking to nations. I mean, beginning of, uh, end of June, he spoke about a Kairos moment and the indication would be the Big Ben stop. Um, some, he said, watch the Big Ben. And then uh, a month later, the Big Ben um, was stopped and it would start in four years from now. Another thing he prophesied was... Um, and actually, that was almost June 27th. It was the start of the outpouring year. It was on that day. He contacted Rakesh and he said, there is something that is happening in the United Kingdom. He was in Australia. Then he said about uh, women in Saudi Arabia, uh, the, there's a move of God that will result in freedom. And the indication would be that Saudi, would, Saudi Arabia would allow women to drive. Yeah, and it, yesterday it was in the papers. You know, and for I grew up in Saudi Arabia. I know how impossible that would have been. You know, so he's having accurate words. Of, uh, he's speaking to. He's speaking national level. It's amazing. And so he's here with us for maximum. We've got uh, Georgian and Winnie Banoff, our spiritual parents, with us. Uh, they're called the Joy Apostles. Oh my Lord, they're here. Um, in fact, uh, we're. I, I think uh, we haven't fully set the schedule, but we're looking to have Winnie. Uh, in fact, for the first session, because when she comes, you know, there are two sets of people. Some people get offended. Some people get drunk. Okay, in this house, I think it will be everybody is going to be drunk. It was during her session that the outpouring took place. I've never seen anyone who breaks through and brings an outpouring in a in a level of that way. So she's she's here. Georgian is here, and um, we, of course, Rakesh and I we've been ministering. So come, it is first come first serve basis. This is the number of seats we have. We're gonna have an overflow downstairs, but. It's first come, first serve basis. And it is free. The London Awakening continues in the evening. Praise God. I think that's amazing. You know, that is amazing. Um, you know, and um, actually, uh, I was, you know, we've been taking, um, we've, been, we've been allowing people to sow into the awakening for the last um, 
you know, from the beginning for the last 14 weeks. And um, it, it is amazing where all we're getting people are watching and sewing from. Um, it was, we've had, we ourselves can speak of testimonies, people from New Zealand. Today, somebody sent a word um, and sent a uh, sewed in from Israel because they believe that the word of God that was released here, the, the Lord uh, confirmed it in their spirit and they've, they're sending. We received um, an offering from France in the post, two one pound coins. And it was a prophetic sign and it was amazing because that day, Cheyenne gave Rakesh and I two one dollar notes. You know, and it, it was a sign of a double blessing. So I walk into service that evening and then it's the two one pound coins and I, I saw the multiple currencies that we received and I knew it was it, it, it was significant for the fact that what, what, what we are carrying is not restricted to a nation, a tribe, or a people. It is a move of God that will touch the nations. And as we get hungry and we, get, we draw near to God, our Lord draws nearer. Hallelujah. So we have been giving people opportunities to sow into the revival. Um, if you're watching online, you can go to our website. Um, it, it, there's a tab that says giving. Um, you, you know, if you're here, uh, how many, I mean, I, I say this, but how many of you would like the government to sow into um, revival? Yeah? Then tick the gift aid box. Wherever you're going, whichever local church also, tick the gift aid box. Let the government sow into revival its good seed. You know, so you, if you want to give an offering, give it freely, give it joyfully, give it happily, and give generously to the Lord. For the word of God says he gives seed to the sower and bread for life. And I just want to read out about a church that gave over 2,000 years ago, and we're still talking about it. Paul speaks about the church in, in Philippi, and he says, but I rejoiced in the Lord greatly that now at last your care for me has flourished again. Though you surely did care, but you lacked opportunity. Here we're giving an opportunity. You know, now not that I speak in regard to need, for I have learned in whatever state I am to be content. I know how to be abased. I know how to abound. Everywhere in all things I have learned both to be full and to be hungry. I love that statement both to be full and both to be hungry. I love that. I, that's amazing. To, to Both to abound and to suffer need. I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. Nevertheless, you've done well that you've shared in my distress. You know, so um, it says, now you Philippians know also that in the beginning of the gospel, when I departed from Macedonia, no church shared with me concerning giving and receiving but you only. There is a joy in giving, sowing seeds for the sustenance of God's move or God's people. It is a pure joy and it abounds into our lives. You know, so um, in all of our lives, it's, it's blessed to give. That is the, you know, really who is truly rich those who can give you know that is richness so if you would like to give into what is happening here you know lift up your hands and say here I am you know and um, the, you know the ushers are good looking ushers beautifully anointed will be giving you the offering envelopes remember to take gift aid I love it I love when the government sows into churches this is the only nation that I know of like this. This is, an, I, and I think one of the reasons we're having revival this in this nation is the, the this government is sowing. Hallelujah. So give joyfully, and we're going to continue to worship when you're ready. Um, there are four ways of giving, cash, check, uh, debit card, credit card, and, you know, there are different ways. If you look on the envelope, you can find it. Come joyfully and give it into the offering box. You know, and then we're going to pray a blessing over it.
offering, Lord, every seed which has been sown, Father. We pray, let there be a multiplication, let there be a double blessing, Lord. And we pray, let there be multiplication even for souls, Lord, that we are reaching out in this city and in this nation, Father, that they will come. In Jesus' name, amen. Let's give Jesus a clap offering, come on. Thank you. How many of you love Father Christopher? Hey, come on. excited for tonight. Come on. I think uh, my wife, I just want to, before I want to introduce Jared, uh, next week we have Jay John with us on Thursday night. So even people watching online, I just want to make sure that you're aware of it. Jay John is with us Thursday night. 
And uh, we have uh, Richard Lewis leading worship on Friday night. And we also have Simon Breaker coming back for Friday night. So, so uh, it's, it's amazing, amen, what the Lord's doing. And we're excited like for every week on week. But tonight we have a, an amazing man of God in our house. Man, you know, uh, I don't know whether Jaron knows it, but uh, when Preeti and I, we came 2015, Sorry, 2005 uh, to this. Uh, <laughs> Hallelujah. <laughs> Come on. <laughs> uh, yeah, 2005 uh, to the city. I remember someone gave me a CD. He said, you know what? I know you love to get drunk in the spirit. If you want to really, you know, use it for prayer, he gave me his CD. The King of Kings, and, 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 and that's a song which, and lost in your glory. And, and I remember, I used to pray with that song. I mean, I love to pray in the spirit, pray, playing that CD uh, over and over again. And I mean, there was some serious anointing in that. Man, we love, we love your worship. And, and then, I like, I, I, you know, it was amazing to meet Jared when he came. I mean, we met him in, uh, in two months back, but uh, that. He was so hungry for Wawa for years, and he's been hungry. And, uh, and even in those songs, even in that time, and if, how many of you have listened to the album? Come on. Yeah. Come on. Amen. <laughs> Hallelujah. <laughs> you know, I think every song is about revival, man. And uh, I don't know, he's an apostle. Uh, he's planted, I think, they have over six locations now in, 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 in six churches. And uh, it's amazing to see what God's doing. But more than anything, we were really touched because he came in over here even when we had, when we started the outpouring, just to spend and see what the Lord was doing. And we were really touched for a pastor who was pastoring so many churches and he's written books and about revival and, and amazing to come in just to honor and just to see what the Lord is doing. And because he is hungry for revival in this nation and even in the church. Amen. I know that they use, they host amazing men and women of God who are revivalists. So, you know, we, we have such a privilege. And one of the things which we really want to see in the London Awakening is to honor men and women of God who are hungry for revival in this nation. Amen. And we know that he is hungry. The church is hungry. And even people watching online, I just feel that tonight, you know, there will be impartation. See, how many, I don't know, even there will be many churches and many pastors who have been writing to us who are watching all over this nation who are hungry to see a move of God in that church. Amen? And, and it's amazing to hear where church is, where God's moving. Not just in a revival meeting. And, it's, and, and pastors and apostles who are open to a move of God. Amen? So it's amazing. We want to honor and let's all stand up and let's welcome Jared as he comes. Good evening. You all right? Take a seat. Wonderful. My only problem with events like these is I normally just end up on the floor, <laughs> just laughing and enjoying God. So let's see how long I can talk for. God's good, amen? amen. I love the presence of God. Um, my background was I was a worship leader, but I but my, my real passion, can we just make sure that piano's on and the microphone over it? Is that okay? Come on, why don't, why don't we do a little bit? We'll do a little bit. So, can't hear anything? Oh, volume, here we go. Now, it's not got transpose on it, is it? Because you, you're just going to check. King of kings, majesty, God of heaven, we live in you, gentle Savior, can I have my voice up, closest friend in the phone.
Take a seat for a bit. Let's see what happens. Wonderful. So, um, See, I used to have a nice little music ministry. And um, in the mid-1990s, I met the glory of God. That just messed everything up. <laughs> like, like a lot of musicians, it... Christian musicians, sometimes they sing about Jesus, but they're really in love with the music, really. You know, so they, I'm a Christian, but I play music, so I've got to put Jesus in the lyric, but actually I love the music. <laughs> I didn't think that was that good, but there you go, you liked it. And then, and then I remember once we were taking communion, and a friend of mine who is a prophetic guy he, he came towards me to serve me communion, and I was playing at the piano, and he tripped a bit and spilt the wine all over the piano. And then, but he, he paused, because he was a prophet as well, and he just said, the blood is about to touch your music ministry. And um, it, it wrecked me, because I, I went in the... the the following few years, I went into a series of encounters with God where, to be honest, I really fell out of love with music and just in love with God and his presence. And you see, when somebody's been to heaven, you can hear it on their voice. You can feel it in the notes. You can feel it in the room, right? I, I have to say, from when I was here, I'll take this off because I can't see you with them on either. So, <laughs> what the heck? It's all a blur anyway. So, <laughs> what difference does it make? We're all drunk anyway, so whatever. <laughs> so I, I came here in July, didn't I? Yeah, it's even deeper now, guys. You can feel it. Sometimes you don't, you know, if you're in it every day, you're probably thinking, you, you get very familiar with things, but boy, oh boy. Wow. So uh, part of what happened with me in the, in the, in the mid-1990s, I was flying down to South Africa. I, I was on Air Sudan, <clears throat> which requires a lot of faith to fly on Air Sudan. It's a kind of luggage on the roof rack kind of plane, you know, outside toilets, <laughs> that kind of plane. And I took a night flight because then you can't see the sellotape on the wings. It really helps as you fly down. So, <laughs> It's going to be a long night, isn't it? <laughs> We 
not going to get anything done tonight. I can feel it. I'm, 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 fl <laughs> I'm flying down to South, Af South Africa and on a night flight because then, and um, <sighs> I woke up uh, on the plane and I, I couldn't see the plane. I had a vision of the glory of God. And uh, I landed in Johannesburg, spent the day with my host, and then I started to, to, to do meetings, and, and just the outpouring of the glory of God was just incredible. And um, uh, just God overwhelming, saved and unsaved, and visions, and, and, uh, but God showed me the United Kingdom, so I was in South Africa at the time, but I saw Britain with the glory of God moving across the country. City centers filled, miracles, signs, wonders in shopping centers, the glory of God hitting parliament, the glory of God hitting the royal family, the glory of God hitting the media. Uh, signs and wonders. And I've, I've known, it, I, I've not believed, I've known. Do you know the difference? I don't have a belief system that hopes that something's going to happen. I know. And in fact, I've already begun to see the things that I saw take place. And um, I wrote this little song. And I won't, I won't even remember. Don't worry about the mic. I'm happy with it under my armpit if you don't mind it smelling when I finish. You're not helping. <coughs> Visions of glory fill the night. This is me on the plane. Over my bed, angels fly, shining like fire in darkened skies. I'm lost in your glory. affects your life with his presence. That's why Peter could walk down a street and people just get healed in the presence of God that was on his life. Um, I, rem I remember I, I left, I, I was born in Wales, but I actually grew up in southern Spain. Uh, we, we left to go to Spain when I was seven years old. So I know this was before I was seven because it was in our first church in South Wales. And I remember the, uh, anybody heard of Terry Law? Do you remember Terry Law? One of, the, one of the first worship bands in the world. It's one we were still trying to work out whether drums were of the devil or not. That's, you know, and he, and his, his band came to the church, and they must have let all the children come and sit around the stage. Because I remember being, I must have been six, sitting on the stage. And I could feel the electricity of heaven in the room. And at six, I knew God wasn't a song. He wasn't a sermon. He wasn't a moral code or a belief system. He was a powerful person. And, and something deep inside me knew I want to know God. 
and not get taken up in the stuff of church. I want to know God. Even at, you know, I can articulate it now. I wouldn't articulate it then. But I was marked. Every, every youth group. It's amazing that something started with your young people because the last sense of a move of God that we had in our place, which is 2011 to 2013, 14, began with the young people. Uh, I I remember going to pick them up from a conference and they were, there were six of them outside the the conference, it was a tent, it was a youth area, and and six of our youth were outside and they were completely inebriated, complete, not just you know our churches do courtesy drop. We go down for 30 seconds just to keep the preacher happy. These guys, they could not get up. They were completely drunk. And I, so I was saying to them, what was going on in there? Why? Who's the preacher? It must have been powerful. They said, no, no, no. They've chucked us out. You know, <laughs> It's nothing. Over, we've, we're, we've ended up like this. So out of a group of I don't know how many hundred kids, six of our kids get hit by the Holy Spirit. And they chuck them out of the meeting. And we, we were at the beginning of what we have regularly, which is 40 days. Sometimes we do three weeks, but up to 40 days of seeking God for revival and fasting and prayer. And we set aside time every year to just give ourselves to seek God. And I just felt something. It was like a cloud the size of a man's hand. Something's going on here. Three weeks later, God just swept into the church. Um, Leaders were saying things like, I've been born again, again. <laughs> you know, it's staff meetings that are meant to last 15 minutes and just all the staff are on the floor overwhelmed by the power of God. Miracles. I, I was talking to one of our leaders the other day. Um, I stopped counting the deaf ears opening at 60 because I knew I was getting inaccurate. And most of that was through 15-year-olds and people with busy jobs and, 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 and God just beginning to move in the miraculous. And, and the, the, the location leader I was talking to, he said, yeah, I stopped counting the people saved on the street at 100 because I realized I was becoming inaccurate. God just sweeping through. I love it when God comes to church. Anybody? I, I love it when God is moving. I love it when there's a sense of God in the house. I love it. When I was six, I felt God hovering over my life. I could feel it. Can you feel it tonight? You can just feel there's something in the air. I, I love it when God, mid-90s, comes and, and breathes. And, and you just know something in heaven is, is brooding. God is doing something. Uh, and then even, you know, I'm sure many of you can chart little times when you go. Sometimes it's three days long. Sometimes it's three months. Sometimes it's three years when God sweeps in and does something. Um, I feel to share a, a, a short thought with you tonight. Because what I felt when I was coming down on the train this afternoon is, is and, th- and I've never heard this, this, this language before, so I'm just going to use it. And we'll have a go. Is that all right? We'll see what happens. Okay. I felt God was saying, um, I want my move to land tonight. You see, when I was six, I felt God hover, but he didn't land. In other words, I had an awareness, but I, didn't, I couldn't make sense with understanding of what it was about. I can articulate it now. I'm 47, not six. When God moves, very often we feel him, but he doesn't always land. In John 12, the voice of the Father speaks over the Son, and it says that some said it thundered, some said it was an angel. We know it was the voice of the Father. This means in a genuine move of God, some will humanize and naturalize, some will have a spiritual awareness but be inaccurate, and others will know exactly what God's doing. I don't know about you, I want to know exactly what God's up to. In other words, I want to know what the technology of a move of God is. When God is hovering, when you have this sense of an open heaven like we have here, this sense, you can call it a well, you can call it an open heaven as always, you can call it awakening, revival, visitation. Um, I'm quite forensic. I like to know, so what's going on so I can get a handle on what God's doing? And I just believe sensitivity and understanding is going to help us come to a new place tonight. And so it's, it's and, and I'm, I'm sobering up now, so hopefully I'm not too drunk to teach this tonight. And I don't want to take too long because I, I just want to give time for, for God to move among us. But let's see if I can do it quite quickly. Um, 
In 1994, I'd been in ministry four years. Uh, I was already burning out. You know, uh, travel, ministry, it's all great. Yay! Um, but you get exhausted. Anybody ever been exhausted? You know, so much so when you look at the Bible on your bedside table and you remember, I'm up to Leviticus. <laughs> Inside you go, oh, no, Leviticus. And the Bible looks like a big bowl of dry cream crackers. And you've got to eat them all in a minute without any water. And you're just like, oh. Do you know when you get tired and burnt out on spirituality, you love God, but the church, not so much. Anybody ever been there? You just want to, you want to buy a log cabin by a lake in Canada, get a big dog and teach it to bite Pentecostals. Anybody know what I mean? <laughs> right? So 1994, I was there. And late in 1994, completely burned out, but still trying to operate. So saying all the religious stuff, but a shell inside. Um, I went to a little meeting in Sunderland where God was moving. And had a sense of, of uh, a little bit like he's moving tonight. And I remember being there and the preacher preached. Can't remember what he preached, but he gave an altar call and the whole room responded. We all went forward. It was, you know, several hundred of us. And this little old lady came and she prayed for me and nothing happened that I particularly noticed. And that was a Saturday night. It's Sunday morning, I'm at church and during communion, I'm playing the piano. And uh, as I'm playing the piano during communion, it's funny, this is two communion stories tonight. Um, as I'm playing piano community the spirit of God just hits me and I fall off the piano seat onto the floor and just laugh and I'm drunk in the spirit for 10 days just inebriated off my head now it was a bible school so you could get away with it do you know what I mean you didn't have to get up and sober up and go do a job I had a, a couple of people that, that worked for me in my department and they would kind of we need to make a decision over this and I was like I don't care whatever. Jesus loves me. Right? And I, I could feel the presence of God so intensely. A little bit like we feel him tonight. I mean, it was goosebump city. Do you know what I mean? Like a great big herd of wildebeest were riding over my back. God, what is in this place? And I was lying there overwhelmed by God for one day and for two days, and for three days. By day four, I, I mean, I had never been in or heard anything like it in my life. I was lying there thinking, this is incredible. I can feel God. And I'm lying there thinking, stand back, Reinhard, I'm coming through. Right? I mean, this much God. I'm thinking, wait till I walk through the town center. They'll be dropping like flies around me. God is on me. I can feel him. I mean, all my emotions said, you've got God. Just buzzing with a sense of who God is. Between seven, eight, nine days later, it, it lifts enough for me to kind of do life again. I was refreshed. God did something in me and I fell back in love with him. While I lay on the, on, on the floor, genuinely, like most young, passionate, spiritually ambitious people, men, whatever, would do, I am genuinely lying there going, oh, bring out the dead. You know, I mean, anybody sensing this much, God, bring me anything. Jesus. <laughs> Oh, right, stand back, Benny. I don't even need the white suit. I'm coming through. Hallelujah, hallelujah. I was ready to quiff my hair. Hallelujah. I just thought if I if I say hallelujah like Reinhard, the dead will be hallelujah. Because I can feel the power of the King of Kings in me. Do you ever get it? I mean, in here, you must. Come on, 14 weeks. Just to feel God. And 
and I was refreshed. But apart from that, do you want to know what happened? When I went out of that place, having been under the power of God intensely for eight, nine, ten days, do you know what happened? You've heard me before. Absolutely nothing. 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 Oh, God, that's so unfair. I mean, I'm walking through Tesco. <laughs> Come on. I can feel him. I can feel him. Can you not feel my goosebump in Jesus' name? Receive the goosebump. Nothing, no sausage. <laughs> I, I had a huge discovery in that season of my life. That being filled was not enough. See, we, we make the mistake in outpourings that if I just feel enough, everything will change. And we put immense importance on what we're feeling when he moves. So I want to break. I just want to give you a little secret because what we're looking for when God moves is often not the most powerful thing in the move. And I just want to tell you what the most powerful thing God is doing right now here so that you can run with it. Is that okay? Just to, hopefully it'll help you. Sure help me. If you've got a Bible, turn to the book of Luke. Luke 3. Luke 3, 21 says, when all the people were being baptized, Jesus was baptized too. Always takes great humility to enter the things of the Spirit. John's baptism was a baptism of repentance. Jesus never committed a sin, but he gets in the queue and goes through the baptism of repentance. That's the hunger and the righteousness at work. I'm just going to... He is running after all that God has. And as he was praying, heaven was opened and the Holy Spirit descended on him in bodily form like a dove. And a voice came from heaven, you are my son whom I love, with you I'm well pleased. I'm going to take you through the process of what God is doing when he moves by his spirit. The first thing that he's doing is exactly what's in that scripture. And it's exactly what I felt on the floor in 1994. You with me? You're right over there. The first thing God is doing is a, giving us approval. The first thing you sense in, in any move of God, unless there's a conviction issue going on, that be, but most often, who knows what I mean? When he comes, you just go, oh, daddy, you are my son whom I love. With you, I'm well pleased. Please note, Jesus hadn't done anything yet, and the father said, You're pleased. I'm pleased with you. Before he started ministry, his father was pleased with him. We must always live from approval, not for approval. Amen? Amen? And so the presence of God, when he sweeps, now the reason we love it is because the, the, the pursuit of the human heart is approval. That's why the world is in the state it's in. We're looking for love from fathers, from mothers, from lovers. We're just looking for love. We're look so when the spirit moves, it's hugely attractive to our broken hearts because we feel in the room the very thing we're wired to long for, the love of the father. But the very thing that we're wired for there can mean we can get stuck in a move of God by staying there. When actually what God wants to do is take us through to a deeper place in him. The thing of approval is wonderful. I love it. It's right. I, you, you know, I, I, I honestly, I may roll around on the carpet and have a great time in the presence of God person. I want you to know that. I, I love, if you pray for me, I go down easy, right? It's like bowling and I'm just a big skittle. I just, you know, I get overwhelmed and we're all wired differently. I get overwhelmed easy. Um, and, and I feel the approval of heaven so easily and I love that. But that, if you stay there, you will always have a Christianity that's full of presence but no power. 
And it leads to a very frustrating, and then even, catch this, a, a disillusioned sense of revival or presence or the outpouring of God's Spirit. Because you feel the king of kings in you, but you don't have enough power to blow the fluff of a peanut. Work with me? I'm a man of God. Whoa. Right? Get a business card. It says man of God, lion tamer. Whoa. World changer. Right? But if I take a paper clip and I put it on a table and I say, in Jesus' name, come on, the King of Kings is in me. I'm going to make this paper clip move in Jesus' name. Paper clip. Move. It doesn't move. So I fast and pray a bit more. I throw some oil on it in the hope it'll help. And I say louder, in Jesus' name, move. Nothing happens. So I get some Ribena. I do a little dance around it. I pray again. Does anybody have paper clip situations? You get filled with the presence of the King of Kings, then get the flu every November. Work with me. I'm filled with the presence of the King of Kings, but when the bill hits the doormat, you still worry. It's, it's, you, you end up in this weird schizophrenic place where the King of Kings, before whom every knee must bow, is within you. And yet, actually, a lot of our lives are lived like pagans and unbelievers. There's no more power. Because, you see, the ultimate end game here has got to be authority, not just presence. In other words, it works. We prayed and he answered. Something changed. The nation was changed. Parliament was changed. The media was changed. My family was changed. My husband was saved. My finances restored. God did something that broke out in my world. You see... When I was overwhelmed in 1994, God changed my inside world, but I hadn't become a world changer. They are different steps. And so to know what God is really doing within us, we need to take the steps and go, okay, what is God trying to do? And very simply, we'll, we'll, we'll do a short version of it so that we can enjoy time in his presence. See this as a process. Step one. Jesus is filled with the Holy Spirit. That's wonderful. In Luke 3, it continues with a genealogy. So the, the story actually continues in Luke 4, verse 1. It says, Jesus full of the Holy Spirit. That's the first stage, to be filled. Approval, the love of God. It says, return from the Jordan and was led by the Spirit in the desert. So you've got to go from being filled to being led. See, the power of God is available not to those who are simply filled, but to those who become led. And we know what happens next, okay? Jesus was led by the Holy Spirit into the wilderness. If that had been me, after 30 years of the life that he'd lived, he gets filled with the power of the Holy Spirit. And then he's going, so Holy Spirit, what are we doing first? Right, to the desert. I'm like, are you kidding me? Where do you think we've been? Didn't you know that at age 12, I wanted to get on with the business? But you fill me with your power, then say, right, the desert. And he goes out, and I haven't got time to preach it, but in the desert, it shows that he has a sound mind. To move in the authority of God, you've got to have a sharp mind. He was hungry, and whatever the devil threw at him, Jesus just came, it's written, it's written, it's written, it's written, it's written. It's another message. You've got to have a sharp mind. Because no matter how much you get filled, as a man thinks, so is he. Okay? Yeah. The thinking has to line up with the outpouring, and that's where authority lies. But here's, then he comes out of the desert in the power of the Holy Spirit. He goes from mere presence to power by being led. You're filled, you're led, and power begins to break out. Now, why is that? It's this. Inside the movement of the Holy Spirit... He is not just a goosebump or a feeling. We need to understand that God, what's, what is he doing in this room tonight? He's not pouring out just good feelings. Not just pouring out approval, although he is. He is pouring out communication. The most powerful thing in any move of God is not the feeling, but the voice of God. Okay? What we are looking for when God is moving is not how intense did it feel, but our hearts should be saying, if they become mature, what are you saying? 
because all the power is in being led, not in being filled more. The mistake we make is we go back to the river, get filled again, get filled, thinking it will cure all if I just get filled again, if I get filled again, the nation will be changed if I get filled again, revival will break out if I get filled again. No, 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 no. In the infilling, there's a voice, and often we miss it. We just go for the woo worship experience, but actually God is pouring out communication. On the day of Pentecost, the Holy Spirit was poured out. What did Peter say would happen? There will be prophecies, dreams, and visions. In other words, I am pouring out my thoughts upon you so that something can break out among you. But the most powerful thing in any move of God is the voice of God. So at creation, God is hovering over the face of the earth. He's hovering. Now we love to hang around the hover. The flutters of heaven. We feel them in the room. He flutters. We fall, right? We love the sense of his fluttering. But nothing happened until he spoke. And as he spoke through the fluttering, power began to create. A move of God is a creative work of God taking place. He is not coming just to give us approval. In his approval, you will find a voice that creates your destiny. And that is what we're looking for. So God speaks over the world. And what we often don't realize, we we say that God made everything out of nothing. And it's not entirely true in every sense of the meaning of that word. Because yes, God said, let there be light. And there was light. But then he spoke to the things that had been created. So he says to the ground, bring forth vegetation. And the ground begins to bring forth. He is speaking to the earth. Bring forth living creatures and the earth begins to respond. In a move of God, God is hovering, but he's also speaking, wanting to bring forth things from your life. That's where the life is. He's creating something in you. In every outpouring, the voice of God is whispering to bring a creative power to change our world. So Hosea 6 says that God can come like the rain, but Isaiah 55 says his word comes like the rain. He has so many precious thoughts about us and they rain upon us. And he says, but my word won't go out and come back void. It's going to pour into your life and bring a crop and change your world. In other words, do we ever realize? We go, oh, he's pouring out his spirit. I go, no, 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 don't say that. You'll miss it. I don't really mean that. I'm, I'm working on our minds. Why don't we say he's pouring out his voice and he's creating something? Do you know the word rhema, which we know is the word of God? At the root, it literally just means to pour forth. You know, young Samuel, it said he did not yet know the Lord. The word of the Lord had not yet been revealed. You don't know God by a feeling. You know him when you begin to catch his voice in the atmosphere. And he begins to create something out of you. See, as Jesus heard the voice and began to be led by the Spirit, he found himself in the place of the power of the Spirit. The power of any move of God is in the voice that's in his presence. Isaiah talks about the angel of his presence. That literally means the messenger of his presence. His presence is a postman. So when he turns up and we go, wow, approval, he's going, yeah, but open the letter. Open the instruction. Get a pad and a pen. Never go into a move of God without a pad and a pen. (laughs) That's my little rule. (laughs) Why? Because I'm looking for the voice. What is he saying? That's where all the creation is going to take place. Are you getting something? Right? So the power is in the outpouring of his voice. I like this. I was just thinking of this earlier. So Elijah is meeting God on the mountain. And there's a wind. And there's a fire. And there's an earthquake. What's the moment he actually meets God? With all the rough and the tumble, a whispering voice. And that's when it all clicks into place. See, I've met so many revivalists that roll on the carpet, then get disillusioned because they never realized, while you roll, listen. Say, speak, Lord. You know, when you find yourself in the presence of God, and maybe it's conviction, not approval, so you're like Isaiah, woe is me. Get cleaned up, but then listen, because the voice of God is sounding across the heavens, and then you can respond, okay, here I am, send me. I'll hook my life up to that. You see, the power is in the voice. The power of any move of God is in the voice. If, If and when we grasp that, that's when God breaks out. 
in his power. You getting anything? So listen, real quickly. So you understand how this works. The miracles are in the voice of God. So Moses gets to the Red Sea. Red Sea, Israelites, Egyptians. God says, lift your stick up and wave it over the sea. I don't know about you, I've been like, Lord, now we've got the intercessors praying. They're all praying in tongues. And the prophetic guys are throwing Ribena around. And they've got their plastic swords. In other words, we're doing all our spiritual stuff that we think moves mountains, right? And you're just saying that if I pick up this broom handle and wave it over the sea, it'll part. You cannot be serious. And God's just saying, if you just do the little crazy thing I tell you to do. See, miracles are just the other side of an act of obedience. If you want to go from presence to power, from being changed on the inside to that breaking out into your world, the thing that does that is the voice of God. He says, lift a stick over the sea. Now, don't create religion out of that. Let's not all go get broom handles, stand at the beach and start waving them. Because it's all intimacy. It's not method, it's intimacy. It's intimate. So, so you know, um, uh, Jericho, shouts of the city. Shouting at walls doesn't bring them down. But when God says, if you do this, I'll do that. The thing that takes you from presence to power is the voice of God. He's saying to shout at this city. That sounds a bit nuts. Let's do it. Naaman, go wash in the river seven times. And six is not enough. Go wash in the river seven times and you'll be healed. See, miracles are always the other side of an act of obedience. Not from rolling on the carpet more. Not from more intense goosebumps. Not from more feeling of approval. Authority comes from the voice. You can be refreshed by approval, but authority comes from the voice. If God is going to break out in our nation and not just be an internalized revival of us feeling approved, then we have to return to the whispers of heaven. And when he speaks, God breaks out. Miracles in the voice. So one of our ladies had terrible arthritis. She'd been prayed for in every way you can think. And then one evening, God just said to her, I want you to put lemon juice on your joints. Lemon juice. Lemon juice does not heal joints. But she went and got the pancake stuff. She thought, well, nobody needs to know if it doesn't work. So she squirted all of her arthritic joints with pancake lemon juice and woke up healed the next day. One of our home groups, one of our ladies who had fibromyalgia for many years, had a disability card for a car and all that kind of stuff, couldn't work, very, very sick. And in one of the home groups, she's probably listening online now, Angie, the home group leader, felt God say, pick your stick up and lift it over your head. And, and Lynn, the woman, was like, well, that's going to hurt quite a bit, but I'll try. And she managed to get it over her head. By the time they're driving her home, she says, drop me off at the top of my street. I'm going to try and walk home. She walked home. She's now completely healed, given back her disability badge, etc., etc. <laughs> again and again, miracles are just the other side of an act of obedience. I was in a respectable church, a large church, about five aisles in this place. And I'd done my sermon and I thought, I won't go into ministry. I thought that might not be the sort of place that would appreciate wild ministry. So I just filled my time with preaching, stood at the front at the end, singing the closing hymn. And, and then the, the, a couple of people come forward for prayer. So we quickly pray for them. But then there's this pregnant pause in the presence of God. And we're just there with a lovely sense of God's presence. And then it happens. God says to me, run. And I said, no. He said, run. I said, why? He said, run. I said, where? And God just keeps whispering his voice. You see, the power is always in the voice. Run, 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 run. And as your body ever started to do something your mind disagreed with, I just head off running down this far aisle. My arms are out like this and I'm shouting, drink from the river. Now listen, I'm not very Toronto, that's not me. So I'm running down there go, drink from the river. My brain is going, you idiot, what are you doing? <laughs> Just run straight out the back door, you never have to come back again. <laughs> I get halfway up the aisle, there's a teenager running up the middle aisle, a, a young woman. And I thought, thank God, another idiot, there's two of us. <laughs> I run all the way around up onto the platform and I fall under the spirit of embarrassment on the platform. <laughs> I thought if I twitch every now and then, they'll think it's God. And I lay there twitching so as not to have to go and speak to anybody at the end of the service I said goodbye to the pastor kind of hinting that I'd never be back 
But I was working in the area and friends kind of, I managed to get away with not going in the morning the next Sunday. But by the Sunday evening, the emotional blackmail was too strong. So I was dragged to church on the Sunday night. Halfway through the worship, they said, we're going to have testimony of what God did last week. And I thought, what did God do last week? And various ones got up that were touched by some other stuff that went on in the evening. And then this young girl got up and she said, as you know, I've had ME for seven years. I've not been able to do very much. I I never come to church in the evening because I'm too exhausted. Last Sunday afternoon, God said to me, go to church tonight. I'm going to make you run and I'm going to heal you. And she said, but God, we don't run in our church. I was like, what church do you run in? You know, Chris Akabusi's church, I suppose. I don't know. And her words were, I looked up. And I saw Jared run, and as I saw him, the power of God came on me. I ran up the middle aisle, and God did a healing work in my life. Listen, listen, all those great stories you want don't come from more goosebumps. Although, dive into the presence all the time, because that's where the voice is. But work with me. Get the point I'm trying to say. Revival is in the voice. The miracles are in the voice. All those stories are the other side of, you know, God said, and we did, and boom, it broke out. As we listen and do what he says when we're in his presence, God breaks out. Faith is in the voice. One of our ladies, six, seven years, incurable disease, ending up in a wheelchair. She's in a service one day. She'd heard a thousand preachers on healing. But for some reason, that day, the voice of God hit her, and it went from her head to her heart that she was healed. Her and her family went off on a holiday the next day. It was going to be a walking holiday, I think, in the Lake District, somewhere like that. And and what had happened for the last seven years is the boys and the dad would walk up the hills and she would sit in the car reading magazines. And so she's just getting her magazines ready. But in her heart, something has happened by the voice of God. And she knows, I'm healed. So she shouts out to them as they're getting their boots on at the back of the car, if I'm healed, I should be coming with you. So she hauls herself out of the car and she begins to haul herself up the mountain. Halfway up the mountain, she's completely healed. See, the miracle is in the voice every time. Salvation is in the voice. We've got to wait for the voice of God to begin to move in our life. Young Indian lad, in his village, there's a curfew. But as he's praying in the evening, God says, I want you to go out. And he he sees the impression of a tree on a certain road that he knows. Stand under that tree and preach. He's like, but God, there's a curfew. I'll get in trouble. God says, no, you go. I'll protect you. So he makes his way out into the pitch black and stands under a certain tree on a certain road that he saw in a vision. And he begins to preach into the blackness. And he gives it Adam and Eve and the fall of man and heaven and hell and Jesus and the lot. And then he's getting near the end of the whole world story of of Jesus redeeming us from our sins. And God says, now take an altar call. He's like, but God, what are they going to get saved out here? Cows? There's nothing out here. It's pitch black. So he begins, if there's anybody here under the sound of my voice, respond to me now because Jesus wants to come into your world and transform your life. Up in the tree above him, he hears a rustle. And climbing down out of the tree is a young man with a noose in his hand. He said, I came out here to commit suicide. But as I began to set up the rope, you began to tell me the story of a God who loved me and could set me free. All the adventures we long for, they're not in the feeling, although we love to feel good. They're all in the voice. They're all in the voice. Destiny, Romania, a famous Romanian pop star, is in the middle of a concert, 22,000 people listening to his greatest hits, not that we know any of them. (laughs) And he's singing away, and while he's singing, he suddenly begins to have flashes of visions of himself sitting on his grandma's lap as his grandma told him the gospel. He's singing to 22,000 people. The visions get stronger and stronger and stronger until in the end he gives up, puts down his guitar, falls to his knees, and tears in his eyes gives his life to Christ in front of 22,000 people. (laughs) Of course, 22,000 people and the band want to know, what's going on? What are you doing? We're in the middle of a concert. So he stands up and he tells them the story of what his grandmother used to teach him while he sat on her knee. 2,000 people give their lives to Christ in the concert there and then. 
Salvation is in the communication of heaven being poured out by the outpouring of his Holy Spirit. When he pours out his Spirit, the day of Pentecost, there was noise, there was fire, but the end result was communication. Have you noticed the Bible always says the Spirit fell and the word spread? It's the voice of God. Even with Jesus, heaven was open. The spirit descended like a dove and a voice. The most powerful thing is the voice. Destiny is in the voice. There was a, a, a pastor in Russia who was starting a new Bible school. He felt God tell him to start a Bible school. He was very disappointed that only about three people had applied to it. And he was talking to God about this one morning and praying. And while he was praying, God said, Go to the train station now. Pardon? Go to the train station now. So he fights for a bit, not used to God speaking like this. Eventually he gets in his car, goes to the train station. There on the platform is a young family. He walks up to them. They look a little bit lost. He speaks a bit of English. The wife of the family speaks a bit of English. Can I help you? I hope so. This might sound strange, but four months ago, my, my, my husband is a wealthy businessman, but God told us to sell everything we had and come here to be trained for revival. Um, uh, uh, somebody would meet us at the platform, and I guess you're the guy. So he said, yeah, I guess I am the guy. So he took them back for his Bible school. Now he's got about seven people. The next day, in his prayer time, God says, go to the train station now. He goes to the train station. He finds someone else. Over a course of a couple of months, over 180 people are met at the train station simply by God saying, go to the train station. Now there's another one waiting, including one Romanian ex-pop star. You see, it's all in the voice. What is he pouring out here? His voice. How precious concerning me are your thoughts, O God. Were I to number them, they would outnumber the grains of sand. The most powerful thing in this room is the fact that man doesn't live by bread alone, but by every word that pours from his mouth, and it creates worlds. He speaks, he still speaks to earth, and he says, be a prophet, and he forms it out of us. He speaks, and he sends us as missionaries to the far corners of the world. He instills giftings in us by his voice. It's in the voice. Even revival is in the voice. Last story. Argentinian revivalist Edward Miller. Anybody ever heard of Edward Miller? Amazing revivalist. He was in Argentina. This is the beginning of the Argentine revival. He's in Argentina and uh, his church is pretty hopeless. And God says to him, I want you to tell everybody to come, but only those to come who are going to pray every night and I want them to pray from 8 in the evening till 12 at night and he says God I can't get them out on a Sunday let alone Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday and then say if you come you've got to stay the four hours but he gives the announcement and the Monday night four people turn up hungry for revival and he says well I'm not sure what to do but we're just going to pray and quietly seek God and wait till God says something and when he says something we're going to do it so that first night, there's four hours of complete silence. At the end of it, he turns to his wife. And, did God say anything? Not that you look like his wife, I'm sure. <laughs> did, did God say anything? No. Did God say anything? No. The third person, did God say anything? I don't think so. Well, what do you mean? Ah, it's just a bit weird. Well, go on, tell us. Well, I feel like God is telling me to slap the table in the middle of the room. Well, do it then. Nah, it's stupid. No, I don't want to. Okay. Next night, four hours, silence. Has God said to do anything? No, nope. no. Nope. Well, <laughs> I still get the impression that I need to slap the table in the middle. Of, well, slap the table in the middle of the room then. It's simple. No, it's stupid. Night three, four hours, silence. No, no. Well, <laughs> well, go on then. I'll slap it. I'll slap it for you. No, oh, it's stupid. I don't know. It can't be God. It's just stupid. Ten nights it goes on. I mean, some nights they're all dancing around the table, slapping it, and the woman will dance around it, but not slap it. Ten days in, she finally reaches out and slaps the table. This is what Edward Miller said. I remember him saying it. 
the windows in the church physically blew open as the Spirit of God hit the church. One of the women was delivered. <laughs> There's a story. <laughs> By that Sunday, the church was full. Within three months, they're planting churches all over Argentina. All because a woman slapped a table. How many times does God say, shout and I'll give you your land? Wash and I'll heal you. Raise your stick and I'll part the way. Slap that table and I'll bring revival. Write that card. Give that person a hundred pounds. I know it's God when, when that happens, right? When God's telling us to give things away. See, it's all in the voice. The feelings will not bring revival, though we love them. It's the voice of God. And I tell you what he's doing over this nation, through the prophets, through his church, as he speaks, I have seen him form revival in communities as he speaks, as he gives dreams and visions and prophecies. He's not just giving us a nice idea to get our adrenaline up or our hopes up. He is forming us into something beautiful, a glorious bride that will transform the world. But it's all hidden in his voice. His presence is a messenger. So just close your eyes for a moment. He's here. He's here. The voice of God is in this room. God, pour out. Pour out your spirit. Pour out your voice. For my thoughts are not your thoughts. Neither are your ways my ways. As the heavens are higher than the earth, so are my ways higher than yours. And my thoughts than your thoughts. As the rain and the snow come down from heaven and don't return to it without watering the earth and making it bud and flourish so that it yields seed for the sower and bread for the eater. So is the word that pours out from my mouth. It will not return to me empty, but will accomplish what I desire and achieve the purpose for which I sent it. God, would you begin to pour out your voice in this room? Holy Spirit, we know that you're wisdom. We know that you're counselor. We know that you're teacher. We know that you're truth. We know that you're knowledge. We know that you're wisdom. Pour out. I pray for an upgrade of the spirit of prophecy over this place, Lord, that actually there'll be clarity. That the Father God, just, just, just make our spiritual eyesight high definition. Give us panoramic, full color, high definition vision, Father God. Give us visions. I, I believe there are strategies to impact Parliament in this room that God will pour out. There's strategies to impact local councils. There's strategies for business that He'll pour out in this room and over this family and over the families represented in this room. Spirit of the living God, pour out, pour out, pour out, pour out. God, pour out your words over us. The still small whispers of heaven. Jesus. Now the presence of God is just getting thicker. thicker. If some of you want to step out from where you are and just come to the front quietly and kneel or lie down or stand or just be in God's presence, I just believe a spirit of prophecy is being poured out in this place right now. There are strategies. There are strategies. As she called, but there are, there are um, strategies for ministries around the world. Here's the thing. When God pours out revival, he's pouring out marching orders and strategies and ideas and concepts and ministries and ways to touch and change the world. That's what his spirit does. Spirit of the living God, pour out. Pour out, pour out, pour out. As she bolo, riam de le, riabobo, she calo, riabobo. says that Adam and Eve 
heard the sound of the voice of God walking in the garden. Isn't that an amazing verse? They heard the sound of the voice of God walking. What are you walking with? Jesus saw what his father was doing and did that. That's why he was powerful. He was led. The filling had to turn into following. The wonder had to turn into works and wisdom. The spectacular had to become strategies. All great moves of God end in incredible world-changing strategies. Pour our dreams, pour out your voice on us. Pour our visions, pour our dreams, pour out your voice on us. I see an increase in dreams coming. Just dreams. Every morning you're going to wake, get a pad and a pen by your bed. Begin to discern the little dreams that he gives you. There's a wisdom beginning to flow. Go by a journal for the prophecies. Begin to sit in his presence and write what you think he's saying. There's authority in the voice. listening sometimes all he is saying is I'm pleased with you sometimes it is just approval but many of you in this room he's saying right it's time to step up to miracles it's time to start to hear the voice some in this room with dreams for the arts and you need to hear the spirit of God make certain your dreams sometimes it's not that we don't hear his voice it's that we don't recognize it God let your dreams pour out in this place in this place can I have a keyboard player for a minute is there there you are Let's just play anything holy spirity for a bit is that Jesus, 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 Jesus. I just see authority being released over you. You need strategies and you need to begin to um, have a real, he wants to give you confidence in what he's putting in you so you can run in them. There's that picture of, uh, of Elijah tidying up his cloak into his belt, the belt of truth, I always put it. 
so that you can run in the power of the Holy Spirit. I just see God wants to tidy up your thoughts about your mantle, about who you are. And he wants to clarify it with truth so you can begin to run. I see you running into places of power, running into places of influence. Kesh, you're able to affect change. So Father God, I just pray there'll be a new strategizing fall upon this man. It's like a mantle coming down from heaven right now. And uh, it's all, you know, God robes us in authority for our job sometimes. And all we need is the wisdom from heaven and to realize it doesn't come from us and we can walk in incredible things. It's nothing to do with your virtue. It's to do with the call on your life. And that will keep you humble when you realize that. You're going to stand at the end of your life and say, I cannot believe that God enabled that to take place, that God did that. That doesn't come from who I am. That comes from what he placed on my life. He's going to wrap you in a purpose. He's going to wrap you in a, in a plan. And so you need to get a pad and a pen and begin to write down what the Spirit of God is saying to you. Some of your hopes and dreams inside that you feel underconfident about, the Spirit of God would say, I want to bring you clarity and I want to bring you strength. And as you write them down, it's like what was just random thought is going to become a contract between heaven and earth. And you're going to, it's going to be like a stairway that angels will descend on and bring strength into your life uh, for your purpose. So Father God, just release authority over this man, we pray right now. In the name of Jesus. 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 This girl with for real on her just here. Hi, oh, yeah, what's your name? Rosanna, that's a nice name. Can I pray for you? Just put your hands in the air. Father God, just let your presence... You can sit down. You can sit down. That's all right. Sitting down is good. Father God, let your presence just rest on Rosanna right now. Father God, I just see ideas and creativity and thought. And Lord God, I just... Um, uh, you don't have to think like everyone else. God really loves unique people. And it sometimes means that they can feel a little bit lonely because they can't always find people that are just like them. But when God is doing something unique... It often takes place in the heart of someone that they feel a little bit misunderstood or, or, or that not everyone around gets them. But God said, so just trust with me as you walk through this with me. I'm doing something unique in you. And so just allow that not to become diluted by all the influences around about you. Make sure that there's a concentrated sense of what God is calling you to be. As you spend time in his presence and listen to his voice. He wants to give you confidence in unusual things. Lord God, just let it be artistic. Let it be beautiful. Let it be creative. Let it flow. Does that make sense? Let it flow. Is this making sense to you? Yeah? Father God, just let. I, I, just, I just see you sat. Sat up in bed with a pad and a pen. Just write. And here's how to hear God, right? Just write down what you think God would say to you. Don't make it more deep than that. And you're going to find it begins to pour out of heaven. And maybe 10% will just be you. But you're going to find an immense amount of it is filled with the thoughts of God. And they're going to begin to create a confidence in you. So that that little bit of loneliness that isn't isolation is actually going to become solitude in God's presence to create you. Father God, bless this man financially. Lord, rest your hand upon him. Lord God, and I just see the pathway before him. You need to know that God stands in your tomorrows and he releases over your life. Blessing. Trust me, son. Trust me that at every step I'm in front of you and you're walking into your tomorrows. I'm already there. You don't know what tomorrow holds, but you know who holds tomorrow. I'm in it. I'm waiting for you. I'm drawing you forward. And I just see tremendous blessing being downloaded into your life at different stages in the future. And don't even worry for younger generations. I just see God saying, no, no, no. I will establish them. You've sowed the seed and I will establish them in strength because of what you sowed into their lives. Spirit of the living God. Rest in his presence. Rest in his presence. Jesus, Jesus. Your prayers are heard in heaven. That's just let the presence of God rest on you. There he is. Your voice is powerful in heaven. There's some areas where you've been speaking out what you want to see. And God says, keep speaking it. It's creative. It has a creative force. Speak out what you sense I, what I should be doing in that situation. God says, you're not ordering me to do things. You're causing heaven to cooperate with earth. So I just see you even in certain rooms in your house speaking peace. And as you speak it, God says, my presence is coming as you speak it. I'm assigning angels around about you as you speak. Know that your voice is powerful in the heavenlies. The devil would love us to discourage us that we're insignificant. Don't let him. Don't let him. Young man, what's your name with a black t-shirt? Oh, yeah, what's your name? Kevin. Cool. 
Oh, you look like a lad in my church called Kevin. Just put me off for a minute. You don't play the drums, do you? He plays the drums. <laughs> you do? Isn't that clever? God's very clever like that. Just close your eyes. Just let the mantle of heaven just fall on you. Mm. Uh, God is Lord and Master, but Hebrews also tells us that Jesus is our brother. And I just see the embrace of heaven wrapping around about you. Father God, I, Lord God, just rest on this man, even, even on his mind and the things he has to do. I just, he's helping you with some, like a, like a task or, or, a, or a project or something. It's something to do with intelligence and he's just helping you with it. And, it, and he's saying, I want you to understand there's a divine intelligence I'm pouring out on you. And so my mind and your mind, we're going to work together, okay? It says, so, so you might go, so how do I do that, God? He just says, just, just lean on me intimately. And you're going to find more and more. It's like thoughts from heaven, just subtly and just beautifully. Just, just come into your words like osmosis. It's just slow, it's gentle, it's not spectacular. But God's going to help you. He's going to help you to remember certain things. And he's going to give you discerning eyes. Just, I just see almost like technical stuff. You're just going to have a discernment. You're going to know. Uh, you're even going to create some things in the years to come. Create, create some things that are going to solve problems. And Father God, we just bless that part of his life. Lord God, and we just pray that uh, real favor, influence comes from art. Influence comes from things we make. And it, uh, it's not art like in a picture with you, but it is a creativity in a technical way that's going to flow through and from your life. Let it happen in Jesus' name. This man here, what's your, what's your name? Jens. Hi, Jens. Just put your hands out before you. And um, Jens, in fact, I want you to do something. I think it's the Puritans used to do it. Turn your hands upside down like that. And, and so the first stage of that, I think it was the Puritans, one of the other groups like that, Shakers, Quakers, who knows, right? They would begin praying like that before they turn. And what they were saying was, I'm going to empty my hands of all my burdens so that now I'm free to be filled by yours. And I just saw, as I looked at you, God lifting a burden off you that you're carrying and all, you almost want to present it before the throne. And God saying, yeah, yeah, right, now hand that to me. And actually, you don't need to worry about that anymore. There's something that you're carrying. And so we drop it out of your hands in the presence of God right now. And God says, I promise you, cast all your cares on me. I will care for you if I was dead you'd have to work it out but I'm alive and I'm in, intricately involved in every aspect of your life so now turn your hands upwards and let peace just descend on you right now it's taken care of it's sorted something shifted even in the spiritual realm just then and we just release that over your life in Jesus name Father God give him prophetic eyes to see and to understand prophetic eyes just clarify just a prophetic seeing I just see even there's some of that God's coming and he's going to do it even in your dreams and you're going to begin to see things and there's some things even around about you that might trouble you at times but God is going to reassure you that it's him uh, just because of spiritual intuition that comes Father God rest over them in Jesus name <sighs> Spirit of the living God let him rest let him rest let him rest let him rest Jesus hmm Jesus, 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 Jesus. <clears throat> Jesus. I don't know if there's some way that you're missing a sibling or missing a friend, but God says, I'm the friend that sticks closer than a brother. And, and I, I just see, again, that the hand of God taking you. And uh, you say, you know, this is allowed to be fun. Intense doesn't equal spiritual, actually weirdly enough that's why Jesus wandered the hills he only ministered for three and a half years I've already been ministering 10 times as long as his ministry isn't that just you just three years I'm done I'm at it there was a lightness about Jesus and he, he just said I want you to laugh more and I even see him saying can we dance can we dance can we lighten because you're going to understand that you're going to get to the end of your life and realize he took care of it all so you could be lighter so just just laugh more he said, just just enjoy him he says, I like it when you laugh. He says, you've got a lovely smile. Just let it happen in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Father God, Father God. Jesus, 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 Jesus. He's here. He's here. He's here. He's here. He's here. He's here. Jesus, Jesus. 
Anyone in pain in their back right now? Is there anyone in pain? In pain right now? Yeah, whereabouts? On your hip. Would you put your hands on her hips? Because I tend not to put my hands on ladies' hips. And your neck as well. Would you, you, would you come and put your hand on her neck as well in Jesus? Right now, we just pray in Jesus' name. I just command that to lift off right now in the name of Jesus. Just command it. Lift off in the presence of God. Now just stand up. Stand up. Have a little move about. See if it's any different. Just be really honest. Any different? No? Not even a little bit? Let's let's try again. In Jesus' name right now. We just lift off you right now, this pain. We speak to the root cord. Let his presence come on you. There he is. in the name of Jesus. We command this pain to go in the name of Jesus. Have a little move about. Any different? And be really honest. Yeah, is it gone? Isn't that amazing? Isn't God clever? There was someone else who was in pain. Were you in pain? Oh, stand up then. Otherwise, it's like praying for a dwarf. You know, it's just, there you go. Are you in pain right now? Yeah, I just command that pain to go now in the name of Jesus. Look at me. Be healed in the name of Jesus. Let it leave. And the root cause, the, the way that it happened, we just pray against any fear of reoccurrence in the name of Jesus. And we just release strength. As long as your days are, so shall your strength be. Amen. Just lift out of you all pain right now in the name of Jesus. Where was it? Down here? In Jesus' name. Go right now. Move. Tell me any different. Is it gone? A little bit still there. Put your hand where it was. Put your hand where it was. Come on. In Jesus' name. Go in the name of Jesus. Move again. Any different? Get in there. Just keep your hands on it. Just pray for a little bit longer. Anyone else in pain in this room right now? Where are you in pain? Your whole body. Are you in pain? In your heart. Come on, just pray. Have a couple of people pray for this lady. The ministry team. Just pray. Would you stand up then? Come on up. Jesus. Maybe we could quietly start to sing a worship song. Is that okay? Just anything. So wherever you enjoy God, sing a little bit. We're just rolling around in his presence for a wee bit now. I'm doing a couple more things in his presence. In pain. Now listen to this. We're going to sing. The voice of God is raining down. The voice of God is raining. I'm listening. Mm -hmm. I'm listening. listening. Come on. Yeah. I'm I'm listening. listening. The voice of God. The voice of God is raining down. The voice of God is raining down. I'm listening. 
Let's sing it with passion as we close. I'm listening. The voice of God. The voice of God. This miracle. This destiny. This salvation. The voice of God. I'm listening. I'm listening. The voice of God. The voice of God is raining down. The voice of God. We go from being filled to being led to walking in his power. God, we ask that your voice would become so clear to us that we would step out in boldness. Some of us are going to be shocked by the things God says. Some of you, it's like you've set your trajectory in life in a real human way. And just just for a few in this room, God's going to shock you because you're going to end up in a different nation doing a whole different thing than you ever imagined. But as his thoughts pour into you, he is going to turn your life into an adventure. Some of you, it's going to seem like even overnight, it turns into an adventure because you simply realize it was in the voice. Revival was in the voice. Miracles were in the voice. Healing was in the voice. Destiny and salvation was in the voice. Faith is in the voice. God, pour out your voice on us, we pray, in the name of Jesus. Give Jesus a fantastic applause. Come on. You can do better. Let's give Jesus a short offering. Jesus! If you heard the voice of the Lord tonight, come on. Oh, just see the hands in the room. Would you see that? Isn't this amazing? Uh, wow. Every night, you know, I just, just overwhelmed by how the Lord moves so differently. And and that's what I love about Jesus, you know. We cannot come with preconceived ideas and, and how he's going to move. And even tonight, I just believe that even as we go home, you know, people are going to have dreams and, and visions. And isn't it such a sweet spirit, I mean sweet presence of the Lord? Even as we leave, one thing we want to do when we close every night is if you're here for the first time and if you want us to pray because we always hear you know, night after night of, of people go back and they continue to take the fire and the glory of God into the, into the cities and churches. And So if you've been here and if you want us to pray for the first time we'd love to pray for you yeah you're coming for the first time come on but come 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 here but I want to pray first for uh, you, 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 Helen just come Helen I just see even when you were here just, can you just lift up your hands the Lord says that this is a new season and the glory of the Lord you love the glory you love the presence but the Lord says there's a new wine for this new season and when you're going to drink of this new there's going to be a fresh revelation of not just who Jesus is 
but fresh revelation of the glory of God. Lord says that you don't need to just keep drinking what happened yesterday and and to <laughs> and what happened before, but because He is going to give you a new wine for this new season, because that is a fresh assignment which He wants for you in this season. Lord, I pray even for tonight. Let that be a fresh glory, even touching Helen tonight from the top of her head to the soles of her feet. That's a fire of God just flowing through your body right now. And that's like electricity, which is going to just come and touch you right now. And, and Lord says that there's going to be even heat, even as a confirmation, which is going to go through your body so that saying that this is not an old move, this is a new move, and you're going to be used to, to mark this new move in this new way, in this new season, an assignment which is giving you fire, Lord. Let it, let it just increase. Let that fire, let that glory, let that heat increase upon your daughter for this new assignment. That's the heat and the fire. Lord, let's just increase, Father. Even the prophetic word, prophetic voice. Fire. In Jesus' name. Wow, that's more. What's your name? Rosanna. Slip up your hands, Rosanna. Lord, I pray for Rosanna right now. Fresh. Thank you, Holy Spirit, for fresh. In Jesus' name. for the river of God just to flow through right out of her belly right now. Let the rivers of living water go from top of her head to the soles of her feet. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. In Jesus name. Amen. Thank you. back here on um, tomorrow, 7, 7 p.m. We're back.
Um, Tuesday evenings, we've got prayer. So if you are available, come and join us in prayer. Praise God. Um, and that's